Here's Gavin. For using the court. Okay. Excellent presentation. Um, and try to do uh, justice to my own. Um, so I want to talk a little bit today about stuff. Um, specifically, you know, how we use our stuff, the stuff that matters to us. And I'd like to suggest that if we embrace the things that we have in our life, we can actually get more use out of them and do a little bit better for the world around us. Um, let me start off by saying I love my stuff. Um, this isn't something that I've always known. It's been something that uh, I just uh, recently um, recognized during my great big spring clean this past April. Um, I think a lot of us do spring cleans, but for me, the process is pretty straightforward. I empty out everything from the drawers, dressers, closets, cabinets, what have you, and make piles all over my apartment. And I have this uh, straightforward process that I think is fairly logical, keep or give. I go through the pile rapidly, each pile rapidly, keep, keep, give, 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 keep, give. And this year in particular, I realized something interesting. Um, whereas in past years, it was super easy to rifle through stuff and just cast things aside and give those items that I decided to donate away, um, I started noticing that my logic would break down. And it's because I kept getting sidetracked about the things that I have a deep emotional connection with and the things that I find a lot of value in but don't use enough. So the things that I love, I've got this incredible emotional connection to. But yet at the same time, um, there's other things that I may not have that connection to but appreciate using. And I find this across the board with all of my stuff. Everything I have, it's not just you know garbage or it's not just things I absolutely love. Everything has a story to tell and I actually get value out of, every, uh, out of everything. Specifically, I wanted to talk about two devices in my house that I came across during the spring clean that represent opposite ends of the spectrum. Uh, the first is this first generation iPod. Um, I recognize that this week is the 10th anniversary of the iPod, which is a wonderful coincidence. Um, and 10 years has gone, come and gone, and we're on to our you know, new devices, and we're on to new, bigger, better, more powerful things. But this particular device changed the way I listen to music, and I'm sure some of you can relate to that. Um, Ironically, though, I can't actually give something like this away because it doesn't really work very well and it doesn't actually work with any ecosystem that's out there anymore. Um, the other item, which looks a lot like an iPod, is on the other end of the spectrum and it's a digital kitchen scale that I ended up uh, buying, I guess, this year sometime. And I love it, but I don't really have an emotional connection to it. I use it occasionally, but maybe once a month and I sort of wish I'd get a lot more use out of it. So what I find with these two items and every other item that I'm going for, going through, is that there's this, these shades of gray. Keep and give, this black and white decision, no longer makes sense anymore. Why couldn't I flip this whole equation on its head and start thinking about using, you know, putting it back in the world temporarily? And it sort of dawns on me that maybe we need a different kind of marketplace. Or maybe we don't need a marketplace at all, but a different place altogether. And I'd like, to, I'd like to talk a little bit about why that is. Um, what we need these days is trust. Trust to make these black and white decisions disappear and move to more of a black and or a, a sh move to shades of gray. Um, transactions right now, I mean, it's, it boils down to this. I'm not going to lend or you know, rent stuff to you know, Sleazy Pete 69, even if he has a five star seller rating on eBay. Um, I'm going to give those things to my friends. I'm going to give, people to give those things to people I trust. And that is inherent to how we need to start thinking differently about this different kind of marketplace. Secondly, you know, our stuff, all of our stuff, our, the things we're connected to, tells something interesting about who we are, tells something interesting about where we were at the time we were using them. And while we're so in tune to finding things about, looking at things in terms of specifications, output, power, capability, next generation, um, really, what if we looked back at all the things we had and embraced the stories they had to tell? It adds a whole new dimension to the experience. And then lastly, I want to talk to, I also wanted to mention this notion of retail versus renewal. 
Um, it is so easy these days for us to think in terms of buy, sell. In fact, we've been sort of coerced and convinced of this. And in, in fact, what if we looked at the whole equation differently so that renewal was any opportunity we could take something and put it back in the world. You know, my friend Jean, she might need a book, a DVD, a game of mine that I have that I'm not using anymore, that I've had a very uh, short time span with, but I still have it. I think we, you know, it's, it's really about thinking about, thinking of how we can flip the whole equation on its head and make things a lot more about renewing in the world and doing good. So a social network of stuff. I mean, imagine it. Uh, it sounds sort of absurd at first, but at the end of the day, we're connected to so many different people. We're connected to so many different things, and our things really do become an extension of who we are, an extension of what we want people to think of us, an extension of the memories and experiences we have. Could our stuff intermingled with us make for something a lot more enriching in terms of doing good for the world while still allowing us to enjoy and embrace the things that we love and love to have? You know, it's, it's really interesting to think about the fact that um, in this day and age, we know that the stuff that we have is not doing great things for the planet. But at the same time, we're almost programmed or expected to keep buying, keep absorbing things. And there's nowhere for it to go. It's so easy for us to consume these days, but so difficult for us to put things back in the world. Why is that? Why do we have to approach things like that? Technology really can enable us to do these things in wonderful ways. You know, if we think about trust, as I mentioned before, it's not about broadcasting to the world. It's about connecting with just the people that you know, and maybe one degree further, the people that they know. Um, granted, you might not get the, the wide coverage, but we're not trying to sell our own products. Our own products are something that are ready for the mass, mass markets, but not something that we can actually, we, we should care about you know, when it comes to dealing with the things that we have. So it becomes a lot more about driving inwards to community rather than driving outwards to um, promotion and getting things out in the world. I've connected you to my story about my iPod. Um, we're connected now. I'm connected to my iPod. You're connected to my iPod in a way. Um, but just think about all the things on your person, all the things that you know, and, and, all the things that you have at home, um, all the people that you're connected to, and think about all the connections and all the new things and possibilities that a social network of stuff can actually provide. Like I said, I love my stuff. And hopefully someday, I'll love your stuff too. Thank you.